We need to talk about bad people profiting off of good works. Fair warning, I'm going to say a lot of weird things in this video, and although I'd like you to see my side and agree with some points, I pray that you don't entirely agree with me. If you do, you're probably not a good person. Uh -huh. To start, what's worse than someone evil? Someone evil who pretends to be good for their own gain. We've seen it time and time again with celebrities, tax write-offs, politicians. But despite these issues, I believe there is a simple plan to solve these problems. So I offer a modest proposal. Let's first make it so that celebrities can't make money off of any charity they work with. It's quite simple, really. Celebrities just can't get paid a dime for whatever money they raise. The charity can use their appearance to bolster their cause without having to pay up. With this, we can be certain that if a celebrity helps a charity, it is truly out of the goodness of their hearts. And who doesn't love an actually genuine celebrity? It's their bare minimum anyway. If we praise them, it will just get to their heads. Next, how about all of these charity founders? How come they are taking in so much money when they should be giving the money away? Do you really need that luxury condo when you're supposed to be making a new well, building a new home, or researching treatments? But the more I think about it, what about doctors? Some of them are earning hundreds of thousands to millions. Do you know how many narcissistic doctors there are? Honestly, we should be paying doctors less and bringing more into the field, especially since we have AI to help us now. If anything, shouldn't doctors be helping us out of the good of their hearts, and not because they want to chase a paycheck? And why stop at doctors? Why are we praising firefighters, judges, police officers, nurses, volunteers, government officials? Good work should be done in silence. We shouldn't be praising these people. They should simply be helping us out of the good in their hearts, not for recognition or a paycheck. Have you seen how many arrogant firefighters, police officers, nurses, etc. there are? It gets to their heads. And don't get me started on corporations. You really think slapping your name on a charity is gonna negate all the other bad work that you do? Honestly, you guys should just stop donating and just focus on what you're actually good at, making money. We don't need the millions you donate anyway. It's barely anything compared to the profit you make. Just get rid of that sad small team in your company that tries to do good work. They're just PR anyway. You think we are going to view you in a better light? It's not like a million dollars is going to do anything. And you know, the more I think about it, why do we even have charities in the first place? Come on, you and I both know that most charities are just money schemes where no one actually does anything with your money. Everyone says it. Just look at Reddit. I can't be bothered to research charities because I'm busy scrolling through TikTok anyway. And yes, I need to scroll. How else am I supposed to know how messed up the world is? So at the end, let's make it so that no one can profit from being good. We shouldn't allow these evil entities to do good works. Doing good in silence shows true character. People should be good just for the sake of being good. So there you have it, my modest proposal. Okay, so jokes aside, I did pull a snowball fallacy and presented a take that is both true and untrue. If you both agreed and disagreed with me, felt twisted about what I said, I did a good job. The point of that proposal was to bring up this idea of profiting off of good works and whether we should really shame and stop evil from doing good works. A lot of us have this innate aversion to people profiting off of good works, especially if they are already well off, and especially if they don't actually have good intentions. And it makes sense, why should someone who is already rich and well off profit off of charity? Why should an evil person get praise or gain when they are simply pretending to be good? A lot of us also agree that many celebrities companies seemingly only really do good work for publicity. Compared to all the harm they do, the good seems so small in comparison. But let's consider another question. Even if a person doesn't have good intentions, even if a person is already well off, if they are still doing good works, should we really be stopping or shaming them? Sure, a corporation may only be doing good works for PR, but think about it. A corporation's main goal is to make money. Same thing with many celebrities. Many of them are simply chasing fame, relevance, and money. So is there a way we could potentially weaponize this goal of making money and fame to force these celebrities and corporations to do good works? Truly, that's how much of society works. We're built off of people who are quite often just chasing money and security. And sure, if they help people along the way, that's great. Think about doctors, for example. Sure, many are human and probably want to help people. But think about how many actually go into the field because they know it pays well. Because their parents led them to that path. Because they feel superior. Although we want people to have good intentions, sometimes good works don't come from purely good intentions, and that's okay. Further, although it is easy to villainize these corporations, and it is true that there are some malicious people leading these companies, I think it's also important to recognize that these corporations are filled with humans, not blameless humans, but still imperfect humans. Think about how much you focus on your daily surroundings. When you go to school or work, you think about your close social circles and job security. You only think about your bubble. It's easy to only focus on your own life and forget the grand scheme of the world. Now, when you are surrounded by people who only talk about money, or surrounded by only rich people, you can get stuck in that world and forget there are other people who don't have it the same way, which is probably why we can get some pretty out-of-touch songs, pumpkin spice music. Now again, corporations simply want to make as much money as possible. Because of the pressure of the quarter reports, if you are not performing as an executive, you can get booted, which can lead to executives maximizing for short-term gain in sacrifice of good works and long-term stability. 
Same thing with celebrities. Many of them are pressured to stay in relevancy, and the limelight in order to keep their influence. But that's actually a good thing for us. The fact that they are human. So let me give another proposal. Just as celebrities and corporations use us, why don't we use them? For example, these celebrities could either be sitting on their bums, complaining how the coffee yesterday was too bitter, and how their jeans don't fit the same way anymore. Or they could be working to donate money to charities, or hosting live streams to promote good causes. So what? Let's make them feel like they're good people, like they're beloved saints. At least then they'll be doing something than nothing. So what if they profit? More excuse for them to actually go out and donate, and try to make a change. As long as we know that these quote-unquote charitable people are still flawed humans, and that we shouldn't worship them, why not use them? They already use us to boost their fame and prestige anyway. Why should we not use them in return? What's the opposite? That we shame them and it causes them to stop donating as frequently? Sure, we hope that they'll have some sort of moral revelation, but let's be honest. We're all lazy humans. Sure, this corporation may only be slapping their name on a charity to get more publicity, but what if we encourage them to donate more and support their charitable works? I'm sure that even in a corporation, there are still good souls waiting for an excuse to do more good work. Any offset is better than no offset since some offset is more likely to snowball. Here I'd like to introduce a term called least resistance control. Simply put, water, electricity. People like to take paths of least resistance. There was a study that showed that many people are not organ donors, simply because not being an organ donor was the default option. If being an organ donor was the default, most people would be organ donors. What if we applied least resistance control by making it much more profitable for these celebrities and corporations to do good work? What if instead of shaming and shunning, we instead manipulate them for our gain? Use them like they use us. What if instead of only using boycotting and shaming as tactics, we also employ LR control? Tactics like buying more albums or products that are guaranteed to have some profits go to charity, encouraging sales of environmentally friendlier products, demanding charity, sharing and praising when companies and celebrities actually do good things with their money. It will take time and specific actions, but what if we could align profit and doing good work? I also brought up this idea because of the recent Mr. Beast controversy. To be honest, I can't make any accurate judgments right now, especially if some weird news were to appear on the matter. My current gut opinion, subject to change, is that I think this controversy is a good thing since it will check Mr. Beast and hopefully remind him to stick to humanitarian values rather than maximize for results. Very clearly, Mr. Beast seems like a results over feelings kind of guy. An ends justify the means sort of person. Sure, he has a hardened values, but it's clear that his identity is based off of results, views, and objective validation, which isn't a bad thing. He can actually be pretty selfless. He's kind, but you can sense this coldness in a business-like way, which again isn't a bad thing. He pursued charity videos heavily, because they were actually quite profitable. Him building up this persona of philanthropy has been profitable. But at the end of the day, these charity videos don't stack up against the challenge or squid game type videos, which he understands. So I think it's actually quite smart to have all of these game show videos so that he can still have charity videos and his philanthropy channel. The issue is that when you chase only results, you can cut corners and justify ill actions, which may have contributed to the controversy. But I'm reminded of him because YouTube is a good example where those who are popular on the site have to be much more sensitive and accommodating to their fans. What all of this controversy made me think was, honestly, why shouldn't we encourage celebrities and companies to be more open and public about their charities and donations? Why can't we have more celebrities and companies do more public, flashy, and crazy charity events, or even pushes for policy? Why do we keep telling people to do good works in silence? Sure, maybe some celebrities in core might be sleazy, or take more profit than they earn. But if we can get these celebrities and corporations to expose youth and newer generations to donation, charitable causes, and habitual humanitarian work, why not let these sleazeballs profit? So maybe it isn't entirely bad that people are making profit off of good works. Maybe instead we should be using this to even steer celebrities and companies towards doing good work. But to tell you the truth, I didn't actually make this video to talk about celebrities' virtue signaling, Mr. Beast, or profiting off of good work. It's obvious that we should still call out any injustice and scam when possible. I just believe that introducing a new mindset can help pave the way towards better solutions. We can concurrently have some people call them out, and other people encourage them to keep being generous. Truthfully, I actually made this video because I'm so frustrated at how taboo being good is. Let's be honest. We as a society have let ourselves view being a good person as boring, simple, childish. Further, being good is no longer an action, but more of a reaction to when something bad happens. It makes sense as to why. With the oversaturation of content, people try to be unique and interesting. So instead of being just good and clear-cut, you have to be an anti-hero, psychological, or edgy. With mass media, people are much more exposed to atrocities around the world. Of course, as you start to get older, you start to realize morality isn't clear-cut and has too many factors to consider. Further, humans innately feel a survival instinct, rush, and thrill when they hear something negative, so negative thoughts can stick in heads for longer. But viewing good as boring, simple, or childish is dangerous. Although I personally love edgier and morally complex media, 
I do fear that we've disregarded the importance of having clear-cut, simple, moral heroes. We've undervalued the need for a good-hearted Superman. I'm tired of the fact that we have to do good works in silence. We should be sharing and talking about good works. I'm tired that charities keep getting belittled. Of course, if you are struggling yourself or can't afford, you don't need to donate. But I know far too many people with cushy jobs who don't realize how nice they have it, and latch onto the idea that charities are worthless, while they spend much more on games, clothing, action figures, cosmetics, and luxuries that don't ultimately matter. I know it because I am one of them. I'm tired of everyone circulating the belief that there is nothing that we can do as individuals. I'm tired of corporations and celebrities not doing more to donate. I'm tired that every hero has to be this edgy, jerk. I'm tired that the youth who are getting on social media earlier and earlier don't really have heroic role models anymore. To explain my point on action versus reaction, I despise this rhetoric that individual responsibility and work is nothing compared to corporation responsibility. To give an example, even if we as individuals were to plant trees, recycle, remove plastic, build homes, use less energy, it doesn't matter since corporations and celebrities produce far more harm than any good that we do. For example, celebrities taking massive amounts of private jet flights or companies dumping far more waste into the ocean. Thus, individuals can't do anything, and we really just need to put a leash on corporations and celebrities. And the thing is, this rhetoric is correct. At the end, what is the most effective is to put a policy leash on these corporations and celebrities. But very often, I see that rhetoric being used simply to justify individual inaction. People are super comfortable with saying that individual work doesn't matter, but then they go on to do nothing. Sure, maybe individual work doesn't matter, but it does inspire. And sometimes you do things not just for the result, but for the principle. Sure, maybe the few dollars you donated don't matter, but maybe there is a world where it made the difference. Maybe your few dollars along with everyone else's few dollars could mean something. There's a story of a poor woman donating only two small coins, nothing compared to the amount the rich donated. Honestly, in my eyes, her donating is a stupid move since she has nothing, but you cannot deny the beauty and sentiment of that woman's actions. She may have not donated the most. She may have wasted her little savings. But her action meant so much more than what some of us will ever achieve in our lives. She gave her all even when she had nothing. She marked her place in time with that good action. If you cannot see that beauty, you are too far gone. And even if you aren't convinced on monetary donation, what's stopping an individual from trying to support policy to rein in these actors? But if we keep circulating this cynical, ah, nothing that an individual does actually matters, people become disheartened and less motivated to actually do good work. And you know who else adopts this cynical mentality? Our future leaders, children who are swarmed with this cynicism, people who start poor and climb up the ladder only to keep that same cynicism and save their money. People who are born rich and still don't think their individual action could do anything. It takes very little to influence a lot as long as you have consistency. As long as we consistently circulate this idea that individuals can't do anything, it will always be true. Further, you have to understand that although companies can be quite nefarious, again, they are made of people. It really is a symptom of companies needing to make money as their ultimate goal, quarterly reports, need for job security and sustaining high status, that ends up pushing a lot of these executives to do greedy actions. It's easy to think you wouldn't be greedy until you are at the top. But at the end, these are still humans. Humans that have families. Humans that can be changed. Humans that can do good works. It doesn't mean these humans are free from judgment or blame. But they are humans. What I'm trying to point out is that being good is no longer an action, but a reaction. It's a reaction because most of us think that we are being good by pointing out flaws, such as how individual work doesn't really matter, or how some charities are scams, or how big acts of kindness are often PR stunts. But criticism on its own is fruitless without action. It's often just another excuse and another justification for us to do nothing about the problem. We can criticize all day, but it is action that actually does something. It's urging people to pursue policies and politicians that will hold these organizations accountable. It's spreading the word that our actions and efforts do matter. It's inspiring the youth and others to be kind, so that when they grow up they don't become as cynical as us. Something frightening is that I've been somewhere known for likely producing the forefront leaders and innovators of the future. In one of the ethics lectures, the professor asked the class whether we thought every action was inherently selfish. The majority of the people raised their hands in agreement. And honestly, I get it. I grew up in a household where I was taught to protect what is mine. I know those in rougher situations who had to learn to be selfish in order to just get by. Still, I disagree with the idea that everyone is selfish. Definitionally wise, if you think everything is selfish, you in a sense erase all meaning of the word. If everything is selfish, what is selfish and unselfish? But in a broader sense, no doubt there are times when people decide to take an action that harms them more than it helps them. Think about those who sacrifice their lives to save their comrades, friends, and family in war. Think about first responders. Think about martyrs. Sure, you could argue that maybe you might feel good by doing good works. But at the end of the day, if I sacrifice my life to save someone else, no matter what, I technically and biologically lose more than I gain. If every action was selfish too, there would be no concept of friends. Every friend you have would simply be a tool that you use. But I have friends who are sort of useless to me. They are far from my career goals. They sometimes are unreliable and waste my time. But they're still my friends. 
and I still care for them because I don't go in thinking that I'm simply using them. To be frank, to me believing that everyone is selfish is sort of like the early 20s equivalent of when you are 14 and learn about nihilism for the first time. Oh man, look at me I've ascended because I think nothing matters. Oh man, look at how wise I am, because I know that everyone is inherently selfish. The thing is, you can be both wise and not gullible while still realizing that people can do things for not selfish reasons. Being selfish may help you get by right now, but it's a short-term fix. Now, although everyone said they believed people were selfish, most of the people in that room don't actually act that way. I bet a lot of people in that room would help out a friend, even to their own loss. It's sort of like when someone says nihilism's the only answer, but then you notice that they live their lives as if they have meaning. But it's the fact that you can become what you say and believe. It's this idea of poison thinking that may not affect them greatly now, but as time goes on and they get older and more stubborn, face more traumas, and finally reach positions of power, it's hard to undo years of poison thinking. The sad fact is that we don't educate children enough on being good people. Think about donating. When I was a kid, we were encouraged to donate by giving us prizes and pizza parties for whoever donated the most. There surely has to be some way that we can weave in the concept of giving without getting anything in return. As a tangent, I sort of find the phrase money and power corrupt funny, because it's not really true. Power and money don't corrupt, they simply blind you. If you're a child of rich parents, you've probably been in privilege which has allowed your failures to have less impact, which means you don't always have to learn from your failures or realize that your success is not yours alone. When you're born into wealth, you sometimes don't realize that other people don't have that same level of privilege. Further, you may end up even developing a shadow or inferiority complex of having to live up to your parents, which can fuel you to try to become even more successful, which can lead to the need to acquire and secure even more wealth and legacy. Or it can lead you into a state of constant pain where you want to escape. But even if you weren't born into wealth, you are not immune. You might have even been raised to simply just fend for yourself. People who rise up can often forget their roots. It is true, you are the sum of the people you surround yourself with. We humans are so limited that we can only ever focus on one piece of the world at a time. Exiting that tangent, my overall point is that if we can educate and spread the knowledge on understanding one's own blessings and the habit to donate, we can hopefully encourage good, genuine works. Because currently, we don't have any of that. No one is really teaching anyone to be kind or generous. The main rhetoric is to simply accumulate and secure wealth, which isn't bad inherently, but it needs to be balanced out. So my call to action is that we shouldn't just do good works in silence. If you are a celebrity, you should be loud about your good works. You should use your resources and fundings to become a role model. Sure, you aren't perfect. But the point is that within your time of good works, you were able to spread a message. I don't think we should only shame these celebrities or corporations for doing PR good work. I think instead we should encourage and use them to try to do more good work. We should push for education that teaches values, such as basic kindness, charity, and empathy. That sort of content should be able to bypass any political haystack. And to everyone, we shouldn't shy away from talking about good works. If your friend helped others, don't be jealous or tune out the message, but join them and be happy about the good works. If the conversation about charity comes up, don't just say how most charities are just black holes. Be curious on what charities are available. Give when you can, not only based on result, but also principle. If you hear news on a topic, look for the good within all the bad. Make videos not only on controversies or drama, but also good works and actions. Do not only be good in silence, be loud in your goodness. Stop believing that being good is to be naive. To be good in an evil world requires far more sacrifice and maturity. People are the sum of the content they consume, and although I'm not foolish enough to believe that watching one video on good works is going to change anything, if we flood our lives, daily interactions, media, education, entertainment, consumption with good works, we can eventually get people to be in the habit of doing good works. We all forget how much of an impact the content we consume has on us. Many of us feel hopeless because all we consume, believe, and talk about is hopelessness, complexity, and dreariness. Think about the impact especially when younger generations are getting on social media earlier and earlier. I don't want to say that we need to return to a simpler definition of good, because honestly, that has never existed, and will never exist. It's important for us to see the good and evil in all things. But I do believe that we need to stop making being good taboo. Rather than just focusing on the evil, we need to believe that being good is possible, and spread that goodness to all. We need to unite to believe in a triumphing good, the belief that we can change the world for the better, that we can stick to our ideals, even if everything is falling apart. Even though the world is chaos, pain, and suffering, we need to believe and talk about a triumphing good. Not to be blind to evil, but to be able to accept and do triumphing good in exclamation. That is my honest proposal.